I'm Phil Ho. Uh, yeah, this is episode 10 for us. We've done uh, 20 days together as, uh, as a group. Although we haven't really get together as a group, we are, we are here as one, as one family. And uh, yeah, we have a long ways to go still. And uh, I'm just going to keep kicking these out until everybody hates me on Facebook and uh, just puts the thumbs down on everything. Um, I'd like to put a, uh, a big hands out. I have a few friends that are first responders. They work in occupational uh, breathing facilities and uh, they, are, they are kicking ass for us. They're saving lives as fast as they can. Uh, this is just a very, very sad time for all of us. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep working and keep supporting each other as best we can. So uh, as we've been going along here, we've been talking about a lot of stuff that happens on the ground before a truss gets lifted up, when a truss gets lifted up, the wraps that are happening on the truss, how to run a motor out, how to uh, be safe about running a motor, plugging into a distro, etc., etc. Uh, so I thought today we'd talk a little bit about overhead rigging. So uh, because my employer said that I have to wear a vest and a helmet, I've got a vest and a helmet on. They're my vest, my helmet. Um, they don't go back in a box and just come back out to me. They belong to me personally. Um, yeah, you can get a nice vest at Post Tool, get a nice helmet online. Uh, yeah, this is a Petzl Vertec. This is a vest from Post Tool. Uh, so overhead lifting. And overhead lifting means most likely we are in a helmet because there's pe people working overhead. They're pulling ropes. There's chains slapping around. Uh, they're pulling bridles, they're, they're doing whatever it takes to get the points up. So what I've created here for us is to a situation where we have uh, a point situation in one place here and a point situation in one place here. So the first thing we want to talk about in a point situation is that it may be a piece of truss, it may be a beam, it may be a multitude uh, of other objects in the air but uh, we're going to have to create a connection point to that that can be worked on, not only on the ground and gotten up in the air, but up in the air so we can bring it back down to the ground. The guys if, are either in harnesses working on beams or in a boom lift, or they're in a scissor lift. If they're in the air, probably have a helmet on. Employers probably saying, put your helmet on, there's guys in the air. So don't shun that, don't say, hey, I don't need to do that, I can wear a helmet for 25 years, why should I wear it for the past two years that people have said something about it. Um, the two situations I've created here, it's a truss and a truss, which represents a beam and a beam. Uh, the most common connection, I'm not going to say the most common connection, one connection that we see in convention centers, especially Moscone, is going to be an eye bolt in the ceiling. Uh, the eye bolt connection in the ceiling, we never clip the chain straight into the eye. We always create some kind of connection point in between, that's not the strength that's being uh, judged here. It's the ability to make another connection to these points. So invariably, in A, B, and C, you're going to have multiple connections to eye bolts going in multiple directions. The other kind of connections that we make in the air, it could be simply a swing over the beam, like this, come into a shackle, like this. And the hook being made straight into the shackle here. Uh, I had a couple questions about doubling up on connections in the ceiling. So this is my opinion. And this is just an opinion. This is an opinion. If we know that the breaking or the working load limit is, is four tons, and we know that this in a basket is going to be 10,600 pounds, which is five tons, why do I need to make two connections a pop versus just this one. Um, so that's just my opinion. I think one connection point is fine. We're at the working load limit here. We have a working load limit here. And then the chain motor coming down is at least five times lower than that connection. A couple other connections you might see here is a wire rope basket. This is called a rock and roll style five foot basket. It would include two shackles, a working shackle, as well as a sidecar shackle, which allows the connection to be in the, made in the air while the weight is being handled by the load shackle. Uh, you 
might also see something like a split basket. It also allows it to be pulled into the air, made in the air, while the load shackle is holding the weight and the connection is made, and then can be released down onto the uh, sidecar shackle. We can show you a quick uh, demonstration here. Um, we are in a pulling situation. We're pulling up the five basket here with a sidecar on it. The ability to stand in the rope is super important in some manner. So there's the weight being held up by your foot. We're taking the five basket, being moved over or around or through the beam, and we can close the connection with the simple sidecar here. Now, when we're in the air, we want this to be as neat as possible. We don't want twists in the five, we don't want you know, all kinds of stuff that gets in the way. So we just want to make it nice and clean. We close it. To finalize in the air, we're using a burlap sack to protect the steel, the beam, the spanner, whatever we're doing here. We can release the weight and make sure everything's nice and neat. And there we go. We're set to go. But boom, we take our bowling out. We can reverse this on the out. The bowling goes back in. We pick up on the line. We break the sidecar shackle. We lower it in. Um, that's just a little bit about upward connections. We can continue with this. I believe that uh, our next thing would be how do we create connections between two different points? And that's going to be what we call a bridle. So if we come between two points and we want to create something in between, we're creating a bridle. It gets moved around with a common element. Action allows us to move our points. We'll go through both uh, doing this in the air, San Jose Arena, Oakland Arena, uh, the new uh, Chase Center, the Cow Palace, or anywhere that we have to create a point from beam to beam. Uh, even in Moscone, maybe creating a point, point from eye to eye, um, and that involves sort of the same thing, but uh, where the stack chain sits, uh, that's kind of it. Uh, the stack chain allows us to move the point back and forth. So that's kind of our connections in the air for a few seconds here. There are hundreds of different ways to make connections in the air, and it varies from building to building. It may even vary from head rigger to uh, production rigger to, uh, you know, just may vary. It's made people like different things. People have different thoughts. Uh, my thoughts are just one thought. There are lots of people out there like me that do this, that have different styles and different ways of doing this. And uh, I think that pretty much helps out for what we do in the air for a little bit. Come back next time, we'll work on bridles or talk about bridles, maybe getting some bridle dynamics and using load cells to accomplish what we need to do. Uh, thank you.